Hi guys, it's Victoria and Chris with Optimize Aesthetics. Today we're going to be talking about branding, why it's so important and how it's so much more than your colors and your logos on social media. And we're actually going to audit some Instagrams, show you some of our favorite accounts when it comes to branding, but I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Chris and we'll go from there. I think I just got really excited. I jumped right in there. Uh, I, I want to touch on, you know, Victoria mentioned your, your logos, your fonts, uh, your, those colors, all those things are important to brand. But when you think about building your brand, I think the first thing you need to do is figure out your mission statement, figure out that slogan, uh, that phrase that's going to really kind of encompass your whole business and, and the clients you want to treat. Uh, and, and the goals that you're trying to help people achieve, start there. Don't start with the colors. Don't start with the fonts. Don't start with the logos. Let's start there and build everything from there. Uh, from there, you'll have the kind of clearest headspace of who you're trying to treat, uh, maybe what those people in that niche um, or those type of clientele would typically want to see or the type of brands that they'd be interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is one of the biggest problems uh, in really kind of any entrepreneur space when you are the brand, uh, it makes it difficult. And we can all have kind of these over compassing like business names. But at the end of the day, when people go to the Instagram, when they come and see you are the brand. So it's really easily, uh, really easy to fall in love with your favorite colors, your favorite logos, uh, your favorite fonts. And it's okay to find a balance between there. But let's remember that the whole goal of your business uh, is to help help your clients achieve their goals. And if they cannot resonate with you and your brand, um, they're, you're not going to be able to achieve your dreams, right? Mm -hmm. You're not gonna be able to do this, what thing, this thing you love, uh, all because of, you know, the stubbornness and, and we had issues like that ourselves when starting the business. So this is something that I think is really important when it comes to your brand. Yeah. Branding is also when someone comes to your page of who you're marketing to. So if you're marketing to estheticians, that's your brand. If you're marketing to anti-aging clients, acne clients, I think it's really important when someone goes to your page, they can know what you, what problem you can solve. So branding is also coming together with that. And you can still make your brand whatever you want it to be. But in my opinion, I also think that branding has to be very clean, precise to the point. It can't be overwhelming. It can't be confusing for the consumer. Yeah, I think I talked about this in, in another course video. I hope you go check out about niching down. And these two go hand in hand. Your brand needs to be niched down. I like what Victoria just said there uh, about an esthetician. If you are branding yourselves and marketing yourself to estheticians, uh, you do have to be very careful with your brand. Let's make sure all of your content, your stories, everything that comes out from your business is focusing on that dream clientele, especially in the beginning. As you grow, it's just fine to branch out. It's fine to build this brand much bigger and bigger and bigger. But in the beginning, let's niche down and let's have your brand really speak for you. And like Victoria says, this can go across to multiple levels. Of course, our brand is premium. Uh, we do high quality videos. That's just what mostly comes out from us now. We try to be very informal. There's graphics on the page. We're always trying to teach people something new and your brand can be whatever you want it to be, uh, but let's keep it set. Let's keep it all aligned. Uh, let's keep, let's stay on track with who that clientele is and make content that, you know, will resonate with them. Then let all the colors and the logos and the fonts come behind that to make it feel cohesive and fun and more you. I'll give an example when it comes to branding and something that happened to me recently is that somebody I was talking to somebody and they said, I know you for two things. I know you for premium anti-aging hydrofacial and face reality. So she knew me from face reality and hydrofacial. Those were the two things that she could think of when she heard skin by you. So it's those words that people can resonate with when they see your brand, it makes them think of something and it'll remind them whatever your niche is, that that's what they see you as. And that's going to make you the expert in that field. So like I said, if you're targeting to, I think it's really important who you're targeting to and just really focus on that. And as simple as the wording in your Instagram bio, things like that, our slogan is 
guiding you to glowing skin without makeup. And that branding, that's, that is a part of my brand because that came from clients telling me what they wanted in their skin. So that immediately told me that I needed to brand my business to what my clients want. So I target a lot of my clients locally and people find me on Instagram. So it is really important. Obviously people, other providers, other estheticians, others in the beauty industry are going to find you and you're going to be an inspiration to other people, which is great. So I think it is awesome to have a combination of both of what people see you for. Yeah. I think hearing that from somebody saying that to Victoria the other day, it really made our entire week and it made us go we need to make sure we continue to use these things because those are Victoria's two favorite things. There's nothing that makes her happier than doing both of those treatments and exactly what we want uh, future clientele to know us for, brands to know us for, other estheticians to know us for. We want to be that exactly in the space. So think about that for yourself. Think about what would be that dream sentence that somebody would say to you, uh, especially, I mean, there's a few people. I will go into a few let's jump right into a few brands uh, specifically that we are huge fans of as the overall branding. And we will both give a little explanation on why we think their brand is amazing. Okay. So the first person is going to be Acne Maddie on Instagram. She is the sweetest person ever. And I just love what she stands for. And you can have a really clear, obviously in her name, it's a clear representation of what she treats and who she is as a provider. So we're going to look her up right now. So this is Acne Maddie's Instagram. And she obviously, the first thing that it says is she is an acne expert. Yeah, I, I think my favorite thing about Acne Maddie, and I was talking to a, a, a friend that's in marketing uh, like myself, and this was uh, maybe you know eight months ago when we were still building our account, and I showed him her as one of our inspirations and someone that we really looked up to in the space, and he was like, oh my gosh, the name Acne Maddie is so sick. And I think a lot of us, like we see that and we've known her or seen her face in our niche for a long time. But as a client that is looking for someone to help them with a struggle that they're having before they get to her page, before anything comes up, they can immediately feel like, no one will get me like Acne Maddie gets me. And I think that- It gets me excited when I see her page- if I was currently struggling with acne, she'd be the first person that I would think of. Yep. It's in her name, her bio, everything about her page, even the colors I think represent, you know, her brand and everything's just so cohesive. Yeah, a few in my of opinion. things I love about her brand is like Victoria mentioned, the colors are beautiful. It's soft, it's easy. It feels comfortable. It feels warm. Um, it feels modern, but it doesn't feel like it's chasing a trend. One of my other favorite things about Acne Maddie is how often she shows her face. Uh, so not only can you see some amazing transformations, but you can also kind of get a better idea of who she is, uh, who the person is that's going to be treating you. Uh, and this is something that I do recommend. I know it can be uncomfortable the first time you're getting on social media. How do you do it? How do you do it comfortably? Um, I know she's recently done a little bit of dancing on there. I, and that's really up to you. If you feel comfortable, then you can go for that, but find a way to show your face. Even if it's just a photo of you in the studio, every once in a while, uh, find a way that clients can come in and get a better understanding and idea of who is going to be treating them when they step in the door. When you feel something that it's like looking up a restaurant on Instagram and they don't have any pictures of their food uh, or any any pictures of inside their restaurant. You're going to yes. feel a little bit scared. You don't know what you're going to be getting into. Uh, but having that comfortability to be able to see the provider uh, that you're going to go into before you go in and however you'd like to do that really is going to come down to personality more, however you feel more comfortable doing that. But find a way to get your face on your page. But let's make sure your page, in my opinion, shouldn't be only your face, right? Yeah. So I'm looking at her page right now. And it's one thing I want to mention is it's clean. So mm -hmm. it's very, very professional. In my opinion, it is not distracting. There's not a lot of 
a lot going on when it comes to overwhelming someone. So you immediately go to her page. There's a nice flow of colors. And she also has a mix I know of her graphics that are also mixed in with her brand, which I think is really important. She has a cute little blue color going on and all of her graphics are all the same. Um, everything is just so clean and crisp in my opinion. And she has a perfect mix of before and afters. When you go to her page, you know exactly what she treats when it comes to her name, yep. her colors, her pictures, and even her skincare brand, which I'm so intrigued to try. I just, I know she just came out with a few products. So yeah, I think th what I like about that is that it's easy to just endlessly scroll so through fun. her Instagram. And it's educational. Yep. So it's as a, as a client or as somebody who's trying to learn more about acne, you can click that first photo or video. And because everything is just, it's so cohesive and it's different information, different pieces of value. It's easy for you just to scroll on there forever. And by the time you're 15, 20 posts in, you absolutely love her. You have to follow her and you want to support. So yeah, let's move on to our next uh, brand. Ten. Yeah, ten out of, Are we rating them? Didn't have, we didn't plan on rating them. They're but all 10 yeah. out of 10. Okay. Our next, I have them in my notes app. Okay. So this next person is actually not an esthetician. She is a social media manager in the aesthetic space. So I love her page. She is so good at what she does. Um, so she had a little branding rebranding going on, which I think was absolutely phenomenal in her, in her bio also shows exactly. She's a social media manager and marketer and exactly in her bio, she does strategy, coaching, management, and all the content is created by her. And she has a lot of personality on her stories, which I absolutely love. I feel like I know her. We talk all the time on Instagram now, and she is just such a breath of fresh air in the aesthetic space. So we'll jump down to her actual page. And Chris is actually the one who found her page. So I'll give you, I'll have you explain what your first thoughts were. Yeah. One of my favorite things about her is I think her job specifically as a social media manager and marketer, it's a very difficult job. It's a job that's constantly moving and updating and you have to stay on pace with what's changing and moving. And to create a personality mixed in with that is very, very difficult. So it's someone that we've looked up to for a while is the way she balances personality and professionalism and still teaching what she teaches about social media. She also gives away all her information so she is not a gatekeeper like people like to say uh, so she's not trying to like give you bits and pieces so you would go and pay her for social media management uh, she knows her role and knows the clients that she is looking for and when they will be ready to pay her for the services so she's not worried about hiding anything but yeah what it inspired us to do is just the, the way like I said she was able to bring that personality bring pictures of her in a space where if she just gave amazing graphics with amazing information, they would already do well. But what she, I'm sure, is thinking about is her overall brand. If she wants to be able to do brand deals, if she wants to show up to events in the future, if she wants to speak, people need to see her face and feel comfortable with her. And that's something that we've struggled with and have gotten better with over time with Victoria is finding that balance and making sure people see her face and they don't just know her as the high quality videos or even amazing before and afters, but actually see someone, hear them speak and feel like you know them so they can connect. And I think that's what an amazing brand is, is a connection. Absolutely. I, again, her page is so clean and very informational and aesthetically pleasing. So clean. I, I mean, you can see how everything aligns with the fonts, with the colors and you can tell that she really puts a lot of energy into her posts and people can feel that when you are, when they're scrolling through your page, they can feel the energy and the time that you put into the post because it, it just does so well. Yep. 
I would highly recommend you go check out her page, especially uh, as someone who's still learning about the social media um, kind of strategy in this game of growing on socials. I'm still learning from her with every single post that she puts out. So definitely give her a follow if you're in the niche of aesthetics or someone who is trying to learn more about socials uh, because she explains it amazingly. So yeah, definitely check you're her out. You're going to love her too. Okay, and the last person that we are going to talk about is McKenna Olivia Skin. So we'll go to her page right here. And the first thing that I see and I love about her page is she's actually very different and unique in the aesthetic space, in my opinion. And you can immediately see she's a holistic esthetician. So you'll see her post and you'll you can immediately understand the word holistic in her post in facial cupping, gua sha, facial massage. These are all you know, the power of touch. These are all things that describe a holistic esthetician. I know exactly what type of facial I'm going to get if I book an appointment with her. Yep, and, and again, the, all these accounts are just so clean and crisp. Exactly. And let's go back down to what the client sees. So if you're a client looking for a holistic esthetician, that's exactly what she is. And I know I talked about the niching again. Let's make sure you go check out that course video. But she's niched down. So if people are hating, if people hate the word holistic, they are going to immediately leave her page as soon as they stumble upon it. And she is just fine with that because she's niched down to the people who that's all they want is holistic. And if we think about even us, um, you know, Victoria does some holistic practices, but we don't call ourselves a holistic spa. So people can come to us and go, that's exactly what I was looking for as far as this type of esthetician. And yeah, find your niche and wear it. Attach that to your brand. That's who you are. And your clients mm -hmm. are going to love that about you. Yeah. She also shows her face a lot and explains techniques. She explains, you know, how to do certain things in her practice. And it's clean, as you can see. I mean, you can immediately see the gua sha, the holistic feel. It's very clean. Again, there's not confusion. And that's so important when somebody goes to your page that it's not overwhelming for people. Yeah. Let's click one of her videos because yeah. I want people to see because I love her talking videos. Okay. Please, please, please. So I'm going to go to one of her talking ones. At the end of every facial, I always apply lip balm. This literally ties in the facial and it makes their skin just feel nice and moisturized because sometimes if you just apply a moisturizer and your lips feel dry, it almost feels like something's off, you know? So always make sure that you apply a lip balm afterwards. At the end of every facial, I always apply. So one of the things that I think is so cool and a little bit ballsy about her is that, I mean, she has a relationship with her clients that she can set up a camera and put a microphone on. And I don't know if you've ever tried to do this before, but setting that up and confidently communicating in front of a paying client, uh, I'm sure her clients absolutely love her and are so excited to be on her Instagram because Victoria's usually are as well. Uh, but I think about myself and I go, wow, that is just terrifying. What if I stutter? What if I sound a little bit silly? So I love that confidence um, and that information. I think, yes, it's definitely geared towards estheticians. I don't know where she's at in her business now. Maybe she is geared towards into teaching more, uh, a course, things like that, kind of exactly where we are right now. Uh, but I think that's still information that clients would be in, enjoy to listen to. Like, oh, I, that's, yeah, I want the esthetician who's going to go above and beyond and apply the lip balm at the end. But yeah, I, what I've, when, it, when Victoria first showed me her page, I was like, oh my gosh, there's almost nobody in the space doing that. And it's off the top of her head, but the information is conveyed clearly, uh, respect and it's insightful. Totally. And she still has colors with her brand. Again, her gua sha even matches her colors. I mean, all the cover photos are great and it's, it's very clean. Again, yeah, I, I think that's the key word photos, tonight yeah. is clean. It's you know, not confusing. Yeah. And also remember she's shooting with an iPhone. It looks like her covers are all done with professional camera, which is amazing because it, when you're scrolling on the page, um, it looks cohesive and clean and, and pretty. Uh, but all of her videos, most of them, at least that are those style are, are shot with an iPhone, uh, with a clip on mic that connects right to her iPhone. So you don't need all the big fancy bells and whistles. And, and that's what her brand is. It's, it's about the information. It's about showing a client what the experience 
experience is like that there with her and the things that she does in her treatments. And that's why her clients love her. And that's why we love following her. Yeah. And branding is all about being unique. So keep on brainstorming, make yourself, you know, a clean, fresh premium brand. And I promise you it will be so rewarding in the end. We're going to go ahead and wrap up this course, but we're so excited. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you in the next video.